folks. Hello, I am Tara from livingonadime.com, the author of the Dining on a Dime cookbook. Right now we have all our cookbooks 30% off in our store for two days only. It ends Friday. Today we are making macaroni and cheese. It's in our volume two Dining on a Dime cookbook on page 174 right there. And this is a super easy, super quick recipe. You want to bring your pasta water to a boil. Make sure you've got good salt in there. And then you're gonna pour in your macaroni. Now, I didn't feel like walking downstairs to get my extra macaroni, so I just used a box of macaroni and cheese right there. And we're gonna let our macaroni cook for just a little bit, okay? Then what we're gonna do is we're going to add our butter to our pan and we're gonna let that melt. Then we are going, going to... all right, Dave, can you show what I'm doing over here? Yes, we were having some technical difficulties when we started, so sorry about that. All right, so you're gonna melt your butter in your pan. And turn your heat down so it doesn't, okay? So get all your butter melted here. So it doesn't work. Just so you turn your heat down on your pasta so it doesn't boil over. Okay, we got our butter almost all melted. Then we're going to add our flour and we're going to whisk that around and get our flour in there. And we're just going to let that brown for just one or two minutes. Now, basically all macaroni and cheese is, is a cheese sauce or a white sauce with cheese. Pour it over macaroni and then baked or broiled. Okay. It's, Nothing major, you don't have to have anything fancy. So this is just making a white sauce or cheese sauce because we're adding it to it. That recipe is in our Dining on a Dime cookbook volume one if you want that recipe. Now, this recipe is in the description below. So you can go to our website, livingonadime.com and pick that up if you would like. It's in our Dining on a Dime volume two. Okay, so now, We've got our flour and butter lightly browned. And now we're just gonna whisk out any additional lumps. You can see there's no lumps. Looking beautiful. We're gonna add our salt. Get a good amount of salt. Then we're gonna add our pepper. Get that in. And then we are going to let this come to a boil and thicken. Okay, and then it's going to take just a few minutes to thicken. Now, after it thickens, then we're going to add our um, cheese to it. Okay, so when you're letting it come to a boil, you want to keep whisking your milk to keep it from burning on the bottom. You want to do this on a medium high heat. Now, once again, this recipe is in our Dining on a Dime cookbook volume two. Can you see how it's starting to get thick on page 174? 30% off right now for our two day sale at livingonadime.com. All right, see how that's getting nice and thick and bubbly. Get it going. Now, if you want, you could add onion salt or garlic salt, or I mean onion powder or onion or garlic powder if you want. You can add anything you want in here. You could add crumbled bacon, you could add some hamburger and make a hamburger casserole. Any of those things would be really yummy in this recipe. Okay. So now we've got our sauce, so I've turned off my heat. I am going to add my cheese 
Well, maybe if I can get it open. All right, I turned my heat off. And I have no hand strength anymore, so there we go. Do you need me to do it for you? No, I got it, thank you. <laughs> All right, and so this is a two cup, eight ounces is two cups, right there. Eight ounces is two cups, so I just put the whole entire thing in there, and I'm gonna let that melt. Whoa. Yum, yum, yum. That looks delicious. So as the cheese melts with the heat off so that it doesn't scorch the milk, just like so. Um, can you hand me the spray uh, grease out of the cabinet? I forgot it. Yep. Thank you. All right, my cheese is almost melted. Okay, so then what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take your pan and you're gonna spray it with just cooking spray. Now, if you want this creamy, then just broil it in the oven. If you want it more solid, I don't know what the, what the term would be. Mm, perfect. Just okay. Uh, then you can bake it, okay? Now, right here's my noodles. They're all done cooking. I'm gonna drain them off. Uh, T. Paz asked, eight ounces is two cups? Yes, it is. Uh, it says right, in case you ever forget, it says right there on the package. Can you see how it says two cups uh -huh. right there? Can you see that? I do not see sort it, of. but I don't know. Well, ugh. I think it was in there. It's, it's right fine. there, it's two fine. cups. Yeah, yeah. Okay? All right, so then what you're going to do is you're going to mix your macaroni and your sauce. Now, you'll notice I poured my macaroni into here instead of pouring my sauce into here. Why? So that I'm not dirtying two pans. This pan just had water and pasta, so I can just rinse it out and I don't have to scrub it like I would need to clean that one. So, that's a little tip to help you save on some dishes. Then, just scoop these in. Get another, just like that. You're just gonna stir, just like so. You could add green onions, you could add chopped um, chopped onions, you could add green peppers, you could add hamburger, you could add sausage. Any of those things would make a really good, complete meal in the macaroni and cheese, okay? All right, now we're going to put out, we're going to put it in our pan. You not? <laughs> put it in our pan here. You're not pulling chicken, Mom. Chicken make get it all in our pan. Now, if you want, oh, that's interesting. Okay, if you want, you could sprinkle this with Parmesan cheese or Swiss cheese or any cheese that you'd like. You can use any kinds of cheese you want and with a little bit of parsley. Now, what I'm gonna do, hello, my love. I'm making macaroni and cheese. I'm going to broil this in the oven, okay? So put your broiler on. Are you paying attention? <laughs> put your broiler on. And you're gonna stick it yep. under the broiler and let the top just get crisp, okay? So we're gonna watch it for just a couple of minutes. Now, in case you're just joining us, Dining on a Dime Cookbook, Volume 2, page 174, 30% off, right now, all of our print books. This is Volume 2 that this recipe is in. Now, when you're broiling food that's getting the top brown, 
you do not want to leave the kitchen. You want to leave the door cracked a little bit, just like so, and you want to keep your eye on it because it'll go from nicely browning to completely burning the top really quick. Okay, because the broiler is like 500 degrees. So you want to make sure that you watch it and you may, depending on your oven, need to rotate it just a little bit. Okay. All right. Any questions, my love? Oh, we had a couple, but I'm not sure. Um, let's see. Well, they weren't related to this. Eva wanted to know if the Dining on a Dime has a good chocolate chip cookie recipe that's easy, but both of them have yeah. different ones, yeah. right? Yeah, we have two different chocolate chip cookie recipes. In volume two, we have the Toll House cookies. In volume one, we have the oatmeal chocolate chip cookies and regular cookies, regular chocolate chip cookies in there. But in Dining Two, we have the bar, the, oh, the bar cookies. Okay. Go so ahead. normally, so the recipe, we, you can make this either, I didn't catch if you said it or not. You can make it just baking it, or you can make it like this and broil it if you want it faster. Well, right? yeah. So if you want it creamy, like if you want it really creamy, you can just broil the top. If you want it more solid, you know how some places cut their macaroni and cheese. If you want it more solid, then bake it for 20 minutes. I'm broiling it right now so you can see what the top looks like, but then I'll, I can throw it back in the oven. And, um, okay, so now, Dave, can they see, can they see in there? I can't see in there, it's too far. Okay, so what it's doing is the top is bubbling, okay? It's getting all bubbly on top. Yeah, I can't see it. And then I'm just gonna watch it until it gets browned, okay? and it's starting to get browned right now and you need to really watch it so that you don't go from brown to burnt <laughs> okay and you may need to turn around i'm going to turn mine around one more time here get it evenly to get it evenly browned all over the top okay we are almost there give it just a minute more Okay, let's see. Well, <clears throat> let me give just a minute more. Yes, did you have a something? Well, no, there were just there was a little more discussion on the the cheese, and basically, uh, Christina said when measuring semi-hard cheeses such as cheddar, Swiss, or mozzarella by weight, it's generally accepted that four ounces yields one cup shredded cheese. Or in answer to your question, yes, eight ounces of shredded cheese will fit into a two cup volume measuring cup. So yeah, so eight ounces uh, like of liquid is a cup. No, yeah. Eight yeah. ounces of liquid mm -hmm. is a cup, but yeah. in shredded cheese, because the vo it's the volume is why mm -hmm. it's two cups. Yeah. Because there were a, quite a few people that were confused, or some that weren't confused. <laughs> so. Okay. Okay, so that's what it looks like if you want it creamier. Okay. It smells amazing. So you just gently brown the top. Now, I'm going to put it in the oven. And bacon i just wanted to show you that just so that you can see what it looks like if you like it creamier and then i'll go ahead and bake it for the 20 minutes and then we'll have mike taste test it yum i can't wait uh so wanda was asking is there a spaghetti seasoning recipe in any of our books yes there is um is it dining one? I think it's dining one. Let me see real quick. I can't remember. It no dining two page three thirty six. Dining two. Um, right here. Right here. Page three thirty six. Dining two. And if you guys are wondering, both Dining 1 and 2 have different seasoning mixes. Dining 2 has fajita seasoning, Greek seasoning, Southwest seasoning, chili seasoning, hamburger seasoning, lemon pepper seasoning, steak dry rub. I have two different ones. Uh, Tennessee dry rub, Montreal steak seasoning. Oh, I was just needing some of that. I forgot I had that recipe in there. 
Okay, I was gonna make that just today. I'm so glad I put that in there. <laughs> Cajun seasoning and adobo seasoning, Mrs. Dash, and then another salt-free seasoning mix, jerk seasoning, Sazon seasoning, everything bagel seasoning. Oh, yum. That one's especially delicious. Right there. And that's all our seasonings and dining too. All right. So I made an announcement that I'm going to be giving away. I We are cleaning and decluttering. If we move, we want to be ready to go at a moment's notice. If we don't move, then we'll just be cleaned and decluttered. So one of the things that I'm cleaning and decluttering was I had a full box of old cookbooks. So I'm going to give away a few on each show. So right now we're going to go through the show with a couple of, um, with, um, we're going to go through the show and, and through, as we're going through the show, I'm going to do a giveaway. This is going to be our first one capture any comments you need real quick dear but oh capture any comments capture any comments Wait, you need what am i oh uh well I, i'm about to do a giveaway so we had a question before you do the giveaway it is vol volume one is the same as the original book right right yes yes, yes so yes. volume one of dining on a dime cookbook is the same as this one okay I guess, I guess, go ahead and create Armageddon for me. Do you got all your questions? Is this a YouTube one or a Facebook one? This one will be YouTube. Okay. All right, so you got all your questions on YouTube More capture? Less, yeah. Okay, all right, if you want a Dining on a Dime cookbook, type in book, and we'll do a drawing right now for this particular book. This is on the YouTube. On YouTube. We'll be doing just Facebook YouTube. in a minute, Yeah, right? we'll do Facebook in just a minute. Okay. All right. Give me a question while we're waiting for people to get their entry in. Um, well, the only question, there's comments, but the only question uh, was about how the house hunting is going for Nancy. Well, it's very discouraging. We had one house come up yesterday that we could pay cash for, and it had about a half an acre more land than we have now, but the house was significantly less than what we have now. It was almost a thousand square feet smaller it needed it would have needed fifty thousand dollars worth of remodeling i mean it would it was livable but to make it a nice house it we would have need probably about fifty thousand dollars remodeling and so we were a little discouraged because we were like man well, it was more expensive than what we would sell this one for but not as nice of a house yeah but the only perk was it had a half an acre more land which really wasn't that great. Okay, let's go to YouTube. All right, we've got scroll up, stop right there. Wanda Hutchins. <laughs> oh, she's our faithful. She's been faithful, faithful. So that's the 20th anniversary one. Wow. That's the 20th. So I Wanda. Know so I mean, I can look yours up, Wanda. Don't email me. <laughs> I've got your information. All right, I'll put you down, Wanda for uh, this, I don't know. Is this the classic, classic, classic now? I don't know what we would call this now. <laughs> the 20th We've anniversary We've got so many versions, I'm not sure. <laughs> All right, I got you down, Wanda. Okay, so let's see if we got any other questions, guys. And Bandana Grandma's on, by the way. Hello, Susie, I was just looking at the flag that you sent me last year and I was trying to decide if I should put it out. And I'm glad I didn't because we're having 60 mile an hour winds today. <laughs> a lot of people asking about your mom. But she said she was taking a break. Yes. So my mom's taking a break. She's a little frazzled. <laughs> frazzled from helping grandma last week. And she still has, even though she's in Kansas and here, she still has stuff going on with that. So she's taking a break from everything right at the moment. You did turn it from broil to bake since it's like 50, right? Yeah, I did turn the oven from broil to bake. <laughs> Rhonda says so. you're making her hungry. She ate already. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. That's so anyway, back to the house hunting. We are a little discouraged. I will be the first to admit. Right now with everything that's going on and with what looks like the president that could be coming into office, 
next Wednesday, Thursday, I don't know, whatever day it is, next Wednesday, if he becomes president, we really do not want to go into debt. Um, so if, if the economy completely tanks, you really do not want to be in debt at all, if possible. I mean, this is, this is the kind of thing that we have been preaching and preaching and preaching for the last 20 years because you never know what is going to happen. And if you have all of your debt paid off, you don't have to earn as much money to pay for your living expenses. And so at this point, as far as the house selling goes, we're kind of of the mind that we don't want to buy anything that has to have a mortgage on it. So, because some of what we had looked at recently, it would have needed a small mortgage that we yeah. could have paid off pretty quickly. Six as months as, to a year, yeah. But it is nice. It's, it's one of the things that we've done all along to keep to get ourselves in better and better financial situation is to never go into a place where we're spending beyond. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, Terry, have I ever tried to make the mac and cheese with gluten-free flour and pasta? Any differences in making it? So I have not made it with gluten-free flour and pasta, but what you would do is instead of using flour in your sauce, use cornstarch or arrowroot. Cornstarch is better. So use cornstarch instead of flour. Then just use gluten-free pasta and bake it the same way if you're using regular dairy cheese. Excuse me. If you need to be non-dairy, just use a non-dairy cheese. And you can use rice milk, but it's not going to be quite the same. It'll be runnier, but the cornstarch will help with that, but it's not going to set up quite the same. The fat helps it set up, so. Um, and Lynn wants to know, do you make your gluten-free bread or do you buy it? Both. And she says she can't find any store-bought she likes, so maybe you... So I usually do Udi's is the one that I do, and I usually only buy it when it's on clearance at my store, so from $1 to $3. But in my gluten-free cookbook... Right here, and I know I've been saying this for six months. I'm this week. I promise this week I'm gonna get the sandwich bread recipe on the website, and I'm gonna do a video that'll come out maybe in a week or two. But the sandwich bread in our gluten-free cookbook is excellent. My boys who aren't gluten free, every time I make this oh, bread. Oh <laughs> boy, y'all. You better be expecting it to be gone in five minutes. It's gone. Wow. And it's super easy to make. It's one bowl. It's so you good. use the mixer, you just mix it together in one bowl. Now, there. There is a learning curve with it. So like if you're at high altitude, you have to make an adjustment. You have to make sure your yeast is, is good. You have to make sure your uh, water temperature doesn't get too hot or too cold. Um, you have to make sure that the inside temperature is 200 degrees. Now this sounds complicated, but it's not. It took me three loaves and I had it down and that was recipe testing. When I finally got the end recipe, it just sailed through. But that's why I get one of these digital thermometers like this, and I stick it in the inside of my bread, and I do this for gluten-free and non-gluten-free bread. I make sure the inside is 200 degrees. You need to make sure the inside is 200 degrees. So... So Valerie would like to know what the average price of a meal for six is with our recipes. <laughs> She's new here. <laughs> she said she she lost her income and so somebody recommended her. Five dollars or less for six people. A lot of my meals are two dollars and fifty cents, but a lot of them, um, like half my recipes are two dollars and fifty cents for six people, and the other half are about $5 for six people. Now here's the thing, why I was laughing just before the show. 
I was looking at those boxed meals that people are having delivered and I about flipped my lid because they were advertising how it's so cheap that each serving 50 bucks is ten dollars each i'm like are you kidding me ten dollars each that's two to three meals for my family of six not per serving so believe me and it's not i mean i know we're making macaroni and cheese today but it's not all macaroni and cheese and ramen noodles it's actual food it's honey baked chicken with rice and broccoli it's peachy pork chops with mixed vegetables and homemade dinner rolls or even purchased dinner rolls. It doesn't matter. So it's regular food that regular people eat, but it's not expensive and it doesn't take a long time either. Cool. And they're 30% off. All our cookbooks, all our print books are 30% off right now for two days. We're having get your preps in order two days and you need to have a good cookbook with tested recipes. So if you have to make stuff at home, if we're gonna be locked down, guys, there's rumors going around that we're gonna be locked down for a couple, one to two weeks. You need to make sure you have at least enough food for two to three weeks. Make sure you have water or source to purify water and make sure you have gas. But you know what? Seriously, you need a dining on a dime cookbook if you don't normally cook because these recipes work. You can make biscuits, it's easy. Rice, how to make oatmeal, all of it is in there. Scrambled eggs, French toast. When that thing hit back in March, our number two handmade, homemade hand sanitizer, put that link in for them, will you, Mike, to our website. For what? Homemade hand sanitizer has been our number one post, but the second one was how to make scrambled eggs. What? Yes. So hang on. I our scrambled that. eggs video was going crazy, and Michael put those two links in for you. you just throw eggs in. So, Dave, can you one. hand me my computer over there? So. Right. Huh? Don't you just throw eggs in a pan with cheese? Well, pretty much, but people don't know you can do that. So and sanitizer and scrambled eggs. Okay. Oops. Ah. Yeah. So, um, we uh, have all the easy recipes: how to make French toast, how to make pancakes when you can't get pancake mix. We even have pancake mix in there because it's just it's just that simple. So. Anyway, all right, let me grab some questions while Mike's getting those in there for you. Uh, Terry did ask, would the 200 degrees also work for banana bread or muffins? I did not. 200 degrees? Well, I wasn't sure where that came from because I didn't hear you say it. But you... I didn't say anything about 200 degrees. Hmm. I wonder if somebody else gave a tip. Terry, re-ask re your question because I don't know okay. what, you're, what you're asking. Sorry, peeps. I'm now sharing the hand sanitizer that Tara talked about, and then I will be getting the... Sharon right says here. those meals that you have to buy and are delivered at your house are a scam. You still have to prepare them. I know. I am just flabbergasted that anybody even buys these things because my recipes, I really usually don't spend more than 15 or 20 minutes in the kitchen, and I'm done cooking. These recipes, they say, oh, 30 minutes or less. Well, that's nothing to write home about. Um, I, I'm adding so, the, sorry, I'm adding the uh, scrambled eggs to the description as well on the YouTube side. Yeah. Uh, Christine, you don't need a coupon code to get our books 30% off for two days. It ends Friday night, I think. Is that what we said? Friday night. Yeah. Yes. Friday night. Actually, it's probably Saturday morning when Mike gets up, but... Don't count but on it. But don't count on it. Get it by Friday. If you guys hear all the clicking in the back, that's our 17-year-old dog with dementia. So he starts pacing. So how much do I think the macaroni and cheese would cost? So it kind of depends on on um, how much you pay. How much you pay for your ingredients. But let me just add it up here for you real quick. So I'm, since I broiled the top, my top's getting brown, so I'm gonna put a piece of foil on there. Um, normally you don't need to do that, but my cheese was $1.68. 
My macaroni will say 25 cents if you get a box of it normally. So that's a, basically $2. My milk, my butter, my flour, probably another 25 to 50 cents. So we'll say $2.50. I mean, for a whole family, that's not bad at all. So, um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, there was another question. Oh, oh, I was gonna say, I shared the scrambled eggs recipe and the hand sanitizer recipe in the comments, and it is in the description on YouTube, but I can't put it in the description on Facebook. So if you're on Facebook or if you just can't find it, Go to livingonadime.com and click show notes and it's right there. Or you could do a search in the search bar. Yeah. Christine wants to know if we've come to New Mexico. No, I don't really have a desire to live in New Mexico. Um, nothing wrong with it. I just don't, would prefer not to be there. Um, let's see what else we have. Uh, Kathy says 200 degrees was about the bread. Yes. You're talking about the gluten-free bread? Any bread. So if you're making just regular old fashioned homemade bread. If you put your, if you put your um, digital thermometer in, it should read 200 and you know the inside is cooked. Now you can thump it with the back of your finger and it should sound like hollow, but sometimes that doesn't always work for me, but yeah, okay, sorry. I didn't, didn't know what that was about. Um, Gil, she cooked the green chili yesterday and had leftovers. They loved it. That's one of our favorite recipes. Uh, so actually Sue says, why do people keep posting the word book? Is that for a giveaway? It is yes. and we have more coming up. Yep. Right? Yeah. Um, okay, Wanda was asking what brand, what, would our homemade laundry soap compared to because her husband can't do Tide? What isn't it? Well, it would be like an, um, I don't know. That's one of those things I would say spend the five dollars and just try it and see what you think. Now, my son who has sensitive skin can't use it, so if he has sensitive skin, um, I probably wouldn't use it, but. You can use Zoat, you can use Feldsnaphtha, you can use Ivory, sort of. I don't like Ivory very well, but those are ones that I do. Michelle, move here to Iowa. Well, I was in Iowa in July one time, and we'll just say that's my reason for not moving to Iowa. <laughs> so the one thing that makes it difficult for us on the moving is Tara has a chronic illness, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, and being in a place where there's humidity is a problem. And there's so many places that we would love to live except for the humidity. Yeah. <laughs> and also a lot of heat is a problem for her as well. And that's why we're in Colorado. Although Mike did pose the question today. He's like, okay, well, how much do we really hate Kansas? Because for the prices we're looking at in Wyoming now in Colorado, I don't know. It may be worth it just to, I don't know, move back to Kansas and suck it up. I don't know. But well, we part of the reason we left there is because of the heat and humidity issue for Tara. And I was trying to think, well, just when I when we were seeing the prices of the houses, it's Colorado and even Wyoming, certain parts of it are getting there. Um, the prices in Colorado are pretty consistent with a lot of the prices on the high places on the east and west coast. And so it would be nice if we didn't have to spend that much, but. Unfortunately, even when we looked north in Wyoming, it's it's pretty expensive for what it is. So compared to other parts of the country, so. Um, okay, now we're gonna let this sit for just a minute. Just let it set up. That looks so good. And then we so will make some here. All right, let's see. Facebook, let's do a drawing for Facebook. Do you have all the questions pulled from Facebook? Uh, oh, let me go back to Facebook and look real quick. <laughs> Come to Utah. Yeah, our kids loved Utah. They went out there. Oh, wrong video. Aw, hi. Uh, so for the macaroni and cheese, we're getting a few questions about things like how long to bake it. I'm sharing the The recipe is recipe. in the description below. The recipe is in the description below. Why am I not seeing us on Facebook? Tara did the... Uh, I couldn't find it either. I had to click on... There was a special spot for it somewhere. Hmm. It's, I okay, found it, there, there it is. Yeah, oh. I found it, but I had to look in some, ooh, 
Hmm. Sorry, do you want more questions or are you going to do the... Um, do you have questions pulled from Facebook? Go to livingonadime.com. Brooke, and there is a link for our digital thermometer. Go to livingonadime.com, click on show notes, and our Amazon store is on there. All right. If you guys would like... All right, this one is going to be... Um, my quick and easy menus on a dime. This is out of print now. Quick and easy menus on a dime. If you want this, say book in the description and I will pick someone for that off of Facebook. Off of Facebook. So run to Facebook. So go to Facebook if you want quick and easy menus on a dime. We are cleaning out in case we find a house. So on, as far as Kansas, there's no specific place, uh, but when we we did live there before in Andover, east of Wichita, yeah. and in Wichita. Yeah. Uh, Wanda said she had an order problem. If you guys have order problems, please email us. Go to livingonadime.com and click on the contact form at the top. We can't we can't deal with orders on here. So if you could please go to livingonadime.com and click on contact, and we will be happy to do that. Okay. Oh, whoops. Got it. Um, Let's see, Brooke, the digital thermometer. I'm sharing a link uh, here. We got, we have it on our Amazon store. And if you can't find it there, you can go to uh, livingonadime.com and click show notes. And it's in that list on that page as well. Okay, so. here we go. I'm going to pick someone who has done a book on Facebook right there. I'm not, Lizette oh, Galdamas. Galdamas. All right. Lizette. Email me. Go to livingonadime.com. Click on the contact form and tell me you won the quick and easy menus. And give me your address. The name of the book and give me your address. You guys would not believe how many people uh, did not give me their address when they won before. So give me your address. Livingonadime.com. <laughs> At the top, click on... Um, Click on the contact form, okay? All right, back to questions on YouTube. Amanda said she made the shepherd's pie recipe tonight. Ooh, Ooh. yay! And Anna wants to know, what is one of your favorite recipes from Dining 2? I don't recall which ones are in Dining 2, even though we just did it this um, year. I don't know. Uh, a lot of them are my favorite recipes that were more expensive, which, like... They're not that much more expensive, but like if they use cream cheese, we didn't use a lot of recipes with cream cheese or stuff like that. Oh, one of my favorites is the white chili. I won the chili cook-off at my church with like 20 chilies. I won first place, so that was good. Oh, I love the seven layer taco dip. That's my grandma's recipe right there that I got from her. So I like those two a lot. Um, okay, so since Everybody on YouTube wasn't listening when I said it was a Facebook drawing. <laughs> well, and some, uh, for those of you who missed it earlier, we did one on YouTube already, but we are going to do more. Okay, so YouTube. I'll just pick another one on YouTube. This one is the 20th anniversary one right there. It was a show book, so it's got a couple of it's got a couple of little splotches. Not this one isn't too bad. <gasps> it's got splotches of actual show prep food. Yes, actual <laughs> show prep food. So I will pick somebody here on YouTube. Let me see. I'm hiding. And now we are stopped. We are at Shelly Thompson. Shelly Thompson, email me. Go to livingonadime.com. Give me your address and your the book is Dining on a Dime Cookbook so that I know which book to send you. Okay. All right. Now, give me questions, guys. So Jody says my favorite recipe from both books is the broccoli and pasta. Which one is that in? She says it's so good, now a family favorite. I think it's volume one. I think it is I too. Think. Ooh, Lizette already sent me her address. You go, girl. You're on the ball. Um, Books are so good. 
All right, let's see. Holy cow. Um, we had a couple questions. We do send books to Canada, but the shipping is really expensive. Okay, I'll just warn you, the shipping's like 40 or $50. And that's so, not, that's because yeah. that's how much the post office yeah. charges us to we don't, send it. It's a four pound book for the volume two and a five pound book for volume one. And so that's why it's so, um, so expensive. Okay, let's see. Uh, some people in Canada, I mean, and it's some people don't mind paying that, but some people in Canada also know somebody just over mm -hmm. the border in the U.S., and they'll sometimes have us mm -hmm. ship it to that person and then go pick it up when they visit their friend. Yeah. That might be something you could do, too, if the shipping is too pricey for you. Yeah. And you can always get the ebook. Beth, you can always get the ebook. Beth wants to know, can you make the mac and cheese with cream cheese instead of cheddar cheese? Yeah, but I'd add a little cheddar in there. That gives it its good flavor. Because the cream cheese um, would be the texture, but not as much yeah, flavor. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so here, the top got a little browned because I had pre-broiled it. Don't do that normally. I just did that for the show. That looks amazing. <laughs> and thank you, dear. You're welcome. It looks all right. All right, so now... <laughs> Now, see how this stays together more? The broiled one would kind of splat more. Oops. Okay. Yep. There you go. Okay. Test it and see what you think. Ooh, yes. Okay. What are we having with the mac and cheese? What, are we, what would we eat with it? Probably just some... Uh, probably chicken or something like that. So you would serve it as a side? Yeah. Some people serve it as a... Well, you can serve it as its own if you want. It's got enough protein in it that... Did you burn your mouth? <laughs> Are you okay? Well, I swallowed it after I realized it was burning my mouth. Do you need to hold it in your no, mouth? No, no, no. That's good. It was delish. It's really delish, but it's really hot. So I might be a little bit more you. can't anything anymore. Oh, that's the Herod's cup. Yeah. It's nice. <laughs> um, Susan, should we be stocking up with all the confusion in our country for how long? Yes, I would. And I would not wait one more day. <laughs> um, there have been several. It's kind of funny because even our pastor Sunday, he's in with the White House. And he said, you know, make sure you guys have enough food and gas for a week or two at least. I would do, I would do minimum two weeks. But I would do a month. I mean, we are in day, what, 300 of a two-week quarantine lockdown. So I would definitely do at least no less than two weeks. But I would seriously get your stockpiles up, and I would do a month or even two months if you can. If you have the money to spend $500 or $700 and stock up on groceries right now, I would probably do it. But here's the thing, your friends and family may laugh at you and that's fine, but if nothing happens, big whoop, you don't go grocery shopping for a month or two. Yeah, you have food for a while. But if something does happen, you're going to be the one that's prepared and you're not going to have to panic like everybody did. 10 months ago when the world ran out of toilet paper. Well, and really, so, if you think about that, we've mentioned this before, we've lived through a lot of kind of natural disasters, floods and tornadoes and, well, we didn't, we weren't in the tornado, but. Um, well, but if you have a tornado in your town and it knocks out half the town, but your house is left. And the thing is that we've realized, and ice storms, and we realized that, because um, we had an ice storm where the power was out for two weeks in, the, in January. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and when the floods happened here in 2013, there were all the roads out of our town were cut off. That we just couldn't go anywhere. And mm -hmm. we had the same issue when we lived in Idaho. Uh, Blizzards. Floods. I've been stuck in a blizzard. So not it's not to, we're not saying be afraid. We're just saying if you're prepared, you don't have to be afraid when because we had a neighbor when the flooding <coughs> was happening and all the roads were about to be completely breached by the floods. Our neighbor drove into town to get one gallon of milk. <laughs> Yeah. And so well, it was and you, now uh, she stocks up. <laughs> if you're always prepared, then you won't have to do that. And that's kind of what we're mm -hmm. saying for any kind of emergency, really. Yeah. 
Uh, water storage per person. Well, at least first get a water filter. I did a video on a homemade water filter for $40 that will do something around 10,000 gallons, I think, or I don't know, it was a lot of gallons. So first make sure you have a water filter. Go to YouTube, Living on a Dime, do a search for water filter. Um, definitely have some sort of water filter, but then I would have no less than three days worth of water per person in your home, which I would say a gallon a day per person. So, and for us, water actually is our biggest sticking point. Um, but I do have a filter so I could go into the ditch. Right now it's winter, I could get snow and we could melt snow. Um, but, I, but I don't have a good storage for water. And you can get, you know, I thought about getting like a big trash can that is food safe and just filling it with water. And even if it's frozen outside, storing it outside, even if it's frozen, we could ice pick it off and melt it if we needed to. But, you know, you really need to make sure um, you need to make sure that you are stocked up. I don't know who is going to be president next week. I know who they say they think is going to be president next week. Willie? I don't know. No idea. God hasn't spoken to me in that way. But I have heard, and it's kind of funny, I watch all different kinds of YouTubers, but like Wrangler Star and um, this other Christian gentleman, like guys who are totally opposite of each other they have no connection at all it's funny they're all saying the same thing you need to be ready in case something happens and so i yeah see everybody's giving me a big thumbs up really guys you need to be ready a blizzard well uh, anything hurricane anything this is just practical you cannot expect the government to take care of you well it's funny because kimberly's farm life she says we get lots of winter weather here in Wisconsin. Get, yeah. get snowed in for days and rural roads are not a priority yeah. for plowing. So That's what happened to me in southeastern Colorado when I was living on my little house in the prairie. I did a video on that a couple of weeks ago. But I would get snowed in and my water would freeze. My well would freeze. I had no way to plow myself out. I was a single, disabled, 19-year-old living literally in the middle of nowhere. I had to wait for my grandfather to come plow me out and I, I can tell you what, I was not his first priority to get plowed out. So it would be two or three days sometimes before I would be able to get, get out. So it's no joke guys, you need to be prepared and you cannot depend on the government to prepare you. Right. Valerie, uh, Charles, oh, sorry. Valerie, we are not making our no bake cookbook into a hard copy. We won't be doing that one into hard copy. Go ahead. Uh, Charles asks, what was the green that you sprinkled on top of the mac and cheese? Parsley. Parsley. It was, how, it was the dried kind? Yes. Dried you, parsley. you can also put chopped mm -hmm. fresh parsley, parsley and stuff on it too, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, did you mention, I was thinking it would be kind of good to put a little bit of Parmesan cheese on there. Yes. To kind of mix up the cheese flavors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, make sure your cars have um, gas. I went and got a few more... Um, gas cans the other day at Walmart. I know these people thought I was crazy because I had a basket full of stuff with four gas cans, but that's something that I had been planning on doing for a long time and it's just one of those things I didn't get to. So I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna do it and be done with it. So that was one reason why I did that. Um, and Penny had said, uh, don't forget to, be, to have supplies for your pets. Yes, and we did get Buster some food too. Yep. And BJ got his cats. And yes, things. and BJ got his cats. Um, cats. <gasps> Ooh. Cats on. Yeah. Nancy made your honey garlic chicken from book number two. My husband, whose health is really poor, said it was the best thing he's eaten in a long time. Thank you. Was wow. that the one from last week's show? Yeah. That was really delish. Mm -hmm. It yes. didn't last long here. Patty, how are you, my friend? We are getting really bad winds. It's crazy. Um. Let's see. What do I think will happen, Rosalie? I don't know what's going to happen. And quite frankly, I'm not worried about it. I did a video on the fall of our nation on Thursday, in case you missed it. Um, and, you know, I set, shed some tears in that. And everybody thought I was shedding tears because I was sad. 
actually, they weren't tears of sadness. They were tears of thankfulness for what Jesus has done for us. And I'll tell you, you can depend on Christ to take care of you. If, if you have given your life to Christ and you are a follower of Jesus, you can depend. He's going to take care of you. And he is the one that will take vengeance on your enemies. He is the one that will confuse the enemies and make them fight themselves. He is the one that will protect you when your enemies are coming after you as they are for a lot of Christians. And they're going to. It's already been said in the Bible that Christians are going to be persecuted. We already know that. So you just need to have faith if you are a Christian to remember there's nothing to be worried about. And quite frankly, I'm not really worried about it. I, I'm curious. It's interesting to see how this whole thing is playing out because quite frankly, we're just battling good versus evil right now. You can just feel that in the air. My, <laughs> my spiritual gift is discernment. <laughs> so I can see things and discern things and you can just feel the oppression in the air right now. Ooh, and a, a, yeah, most Christians can yeah. if it's happening, but you know, you can really tell and see when these things are happening. So anyway, one quick question. Christine wants to know, do we have recipes for pasta sauce? We do. In dining mm -hmm. two or one? Dining one. In dining one? Okay. Yep. Uh, yeah, actually, it's funny because uh, if you're a Christian and you're worried, God has never, nothing ever happens outside of the direction he's taking things. And sometimes those things in the short term may not look great to us, but he has a plan that's greater than our plan. And that's the thing that I would encourage you if you're if you're feeling discouraged. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, really, his, his plan is greater, and he may use people that you didn't expect in some sort of way. Um, and we just have to trust that he's in control of that. Charles, thank you for the five dollar super chat. We do not have a frozen meal cookbook yet. Actually, I was just working on that today, and it'll probably be a few months before it's out, but I was working on that and coming up with some videos to do for the frozen meals. So that is on the books to do. Um, our frozen pizza is going to be in there? Our frozen pizza is going to be well, in there. And Charles was wondering, <laughs> Charles super chatted $5, by the way. Thank you, Charles. Yes. And he's asking if we have a frozen meal cookbook. Yeah, I just answered oh, that. Oh, you did? Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> I totally was looking at the comments. <laughs> Sometimes I'm in the comments and I don't <laughs> pay attention, but that's okay because you're reading the comments. So yes. Yeah. <laughs> Eva, do you believe in the rapture? Yes, we do. We believe that Jesus is going to come back and get um, the Christians and Christ that the dead, that the dead who knew Jesus as their Savior are going to go first, and then we're going to meet them in the sky. And I know it sounds like, woo, but guys, the Bible says that's what's going to Bible happen. Says so that's what's gonna happen. The Bible said that Israel, that was not a country for thousands of years and is the first country to ever come back from extinction, was going to come back from extinction. And they were going to all come from all over the world back to Israel. Before 1948, nobody would have ever believed that. I read books from the late 1800s to 1900s and they talk about Palestine in there. They would have never believed that That's Israel would be a nation again. <gasps> there are all kinds of things in the Bible that has been prophesied that have come true and are still coming true. And so, yes, I believe the rapture is going to happen before the tribulation. A groom would not leave his bride to suffer wrath. I wouldn't. <laughs> well, let me tell you, because you're going to suffer some wrath if you did. Oh, my goodness. I'm kidding. Oh, I'm look. Adam kidding. Goshen is on. Hi, guys. Hello, guys. Awesome to see you. So, yes, that is what we believe. And I think it's coming soon. I mean, it's everything for a one world government is just coming into play. It's very quickly. It's very quickly coming into play. 
Uh, the things for the Mark of the Beast, which is where you won't be able to buy or sell without having a mark on your forehead or your hand, that's coming into place. That technology is already here. So it's just a matter of requirement. The whole um, push to have socialist government, that's all coming together. So, yeah. Um, let's see. And here's the thing, guys. You either believe God is going to take care of you or you don't. Period. If you call yourself a Christian and you say, I know that he's going to take care of me, but you are watching the news and you are getting all upset about what the news says, you are not having faith in God. Period. Turn off the news. They are all lying to you. I saw the speech that was given just, was it yesterday or the day before? And then I happened upon, didn't mean to, but I happened to click on a news thing on YouTube and the reporter was like, we can't even show the speech because it was just so inflammatory and awful. There was absolutely nothing zero inflammatory about it and it is nothing but lies it has been nothing but lies and you need to stop watching the news because that is not having faith that god is going to take care of you you can also tell by the urgency of all their new stuff so yeah um so anyway yeah music mad i i don't know if i'm good enough for god to take me but I try every day. It so here's the thing. has nothing to do with being the good. The Bible says that God, God wants you to come as you are. And, and he will make you what he wants you to be. So, you, so he paid the price for us. And we have to just accept that and have a relationship with him. And, and... And that's how you come. You, none of us could ever be good enough to do enough good things to come. And that's, uh, unfortunately, that's one thing that the devil uses to try to discourage people the most is no matter how hard you try, you will never be able to be that good. But he gave it to us for free. And we don't have to, to do that. Uh, he just wants a relationship with us. And so he sent Jesus to pay the price for us. And um, he sent Jesus to pay the price for us. And by accepting that gift um, and receiving him, surrendering your life to him is, is all that's required. All you have to do is know that you're a sinner. We have all sinned. And we still, There's no we, one on this planet who has not sinned. If Except you, when Jesus came. If you say you haven't sinned, that's a if sin. You, yeah, if you say you haven't sinned, you're, you're sinning because you're lying. <laughs> Believe, know that you are a sinner. Admit that you're a sinner. Believe that Jesus died for your sins on the cross. God sent him to pay for your sins. Confess your sins before God and ask him to forgive you of your sins. Give your life to Christ and that's all you have to do. And if you don't have a Bible, we have a I New Living Translation. New Living Translation Bible oh, for anybody who doesn't have them. It's easy to read, large print. If you cannot afford one, we have a coupon code for free at livingonadime.com in our shop. Bibles. If you can afford one, it's only $9.50, and that includes the shipping. So it's $9.50 total. And we will send you a Bible. And by the way, Thank you to all of you who have been helping us with the Bible donations. We greatly appreciate it. We are sending out around 100 Bibles a week. It kind of depends, 50 to 100, but most, it, some weeks it'll be, you know, 150 and some weeks it'll be 50. So it, it just depends. But we are sending those out like crazy. We just take it out of our own pocket. We don't charge anyone who can't afford it. But if you can, you can pay for it. Um, but get the Bible and start reading in John. Just get the Bible and start reading in John. And then you can have faith in Jesus as your Savior. And you will know for sure you're going to heaven. No one is good enough to go to heaven. 
Well, and the thing that the thing that surprised me, it, when I realized I don't, I can come just the way I am, because I used to think I have to be good enough before I come to God, and that's not at all what the Bible says. And so, um, if it does say that if you come and you you believe that He came to pay the price for you, and accept Him as your Lord, that you um, that He will transform you. But during this, in this life, we're still going to sin. And so there's not, there's no way for us to really avoid that. Um, you will sin less as he works on you and changes you. And when we, when he calls us home, when we die or go to heaven, however it is we're going, he will, um, what I mean, however it is we're going is if, if the rapture comes and you don't die, <laughs> um, he will then make us perfect at that time. And then will be everything that he needs. Yeah. What I'm saying is we're not going to be perfect now, yep. even though he is improving us now. Yep. Jennifer, the Bibles are only 950. Yes. But if you can't afford one, we will send it to you for free. Um, there's a coupon code on that page. Uh, and we will send it to you on us just because we want, you know, I think, Oh, thanks. Anne just donated $19.99 for more Bibles. Thank you so much. She received hers and is really enjoying it. Thank you. Awesome. I'm glad. Guys, thank you for the Bible donations. We really appreciate it. Um, like we said, it comes out of our own pocket, and we're totally good with that. We're totally good with that. God has blessed us this year beyond measure, and we want to give that back. So... Does anyone think our pets will come with us in the rapture, or will they be left behind? We don't know for sure. That's not specified. But we do know that there are animals in heaven. This is one of those things where it's debated, and honestly, I would just have faith. You know, God loves animals. The Bible says God... Um, so I think he'll take care of them. God works everything for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And... I would suggest that whatever happens, we won't be sad. So, um, we'll be gone. So, so <laughs> and there are animals in heaven. Mm -hmm. The Bible describes animals in heaven. So we, we just don't know if those are the same ones, but yeah, it, the Bible doesn't specifically say on that, but, um, uh, Patty, we, I, we recommend that you start in John. Um, John is a really good way to get a quick overview. If you start in the Old Testament, which is the beginning part, uh, you'll it'll be really hard after about the second. The Exodus is the second book, and into Leviticus mm -hmm. is the third book. It gets really hard. If you start in John, it kind of gives you an overview. Yeah, and then you can go, go from on from there. there. I, I would read I, John. I would read, I would read John, Romans. and then I would read Acts. And yeah, then and then Romans. Romans. Yeah, read John, Acts, and Romans in that order, and that'll give you a good basic start on the bible um let's see somebody just said something on here to, oh to donate for bibles go to livingonadime.com click on the shop and there's a bible donation um tab in there or you can send a check or money order to living on a dime p.o box 193 mead colorado 80542 uh, let's see, what else do we have? And you know, it's funny because I think Christians are really feeling an urgency. They really think you, the Bible tells us that we're going to have a sign of the times and we're going to know when them. it is happening. And so really it's happening, right? And just, just the lawlessness alone. Oh man, I keep hearing just keywords. What they are doing to our sitting president right now, trying to prosecute him for absolutely nothing that he did. He did absolutely nothing. Just shows you the amount of lawlessness. This week alone, we had two incidences where people flat out ran red lights, even as cars were going the other direction. They just didn't want to wait. You see it everywhere. The lawlessness alone has just quadrupled, quintupled in the last year. It's crazy. I just think it's funny because I, there are certain <laughs> phrases in Revelation and in some of the Old Testament prophetic books. And I, 
it says in the end people people will be talking about peace and peace and safety and, yeah and people will be in the, the man of lawlessness and there's all sorts of things and starting to hear the some of these things and it just when i hear something that's a direct quote i kind of shiver just a little bit especially like, when it's not not that because i'm that quoting it yeah, not, yeah. not being afraid, it's kind of it's exciting. exciting to see Yeah, it. it's pretty exciting, kind of actually. Fast. Thank you, um, Diane and Barbara, for that Bible donation. We appreciate it. We will get those out tomorrow. Margaret as, is on Facebook side. She's asking, how can we donate? Um, if you go to livingonadime.com and go to the store, if you click on free Bibles, uh, that's the page there we give free Bibles. But if you would like to donate, there's a link on it to a page where you can donate whatever you'd like to help. Yeah. We also use send people free bottles and stuff. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Um, and so, guys, listen. Just read the Bible. Do not be afraid. I will be honest that the stuff that is happening right now is is just almost surreal because it is so unbelievable that you know. It's hard to even imagine that it's happening, but in just a couple minutes. Um, and so anyway, it's very interesting um, how to see this. And honestly, it's good versus evil that is fighting right now. But let me tell you, evil does not win. We've read the end of the book. Evil does not win. You may be in for a fight, but as Christians, we need to stand up and say, you know what, we're going to fight this good fight, and we're going to keep fighting it until we are gone. And, you know, you know there it's very possible but, that they could take down our entire business because we are Christians. And that's one of the reasons why we're totally debt-free. If something like that happens, then at least we won't have to worry about making a house payment. We will just have to worry about coming up with the $1,500 or so a month that we need to pay for our necessities. So, you know, you can't be afraid. Um, yeah, like, like Susie Bandana Grandma says, we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. It is a spiritual battle. Um, so, anyway, uh... You know, that's that's kind of our thoughts on that. I wouldn't be afraid, but I would pray and I would just preach it because the more we preach it, the sooner he's coming back and nobody knows when that's going to be, but we'll see. So, And no matter who you are... <laughs> I would say I wouldn't really pay attention to news or social media or any of that. I, as I've said before, I was in television for 20 years and the news is really not, it's not really accurate and it's, it really hasn't ever been accurate or no. at least not since I was working in it. And if it's making you worried and upset, cause there are things, there are people that, people that are looking at some of the current events and if you look at raw footage recorded of events and you watch from the beginning to the end what you find is a lot different than what's edited and i used to be when i was in television i realized there's a great power to edit things in a way that makes them look the way that you want them to look and i'm not i'm saying regardless of which where you come from and what you think on that i would step away from that right now because the 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 enemy is not other people <laughs> Mm -hmm. The enemy is the devil. And like Bandana Grandma said, the, the principalities, I forgot the exact mm -hmm. quote, the rulers and principalities and the spiritual places. And so that's, we have to keep in mind that the enemy is not the other people. And, all, and our savior is not the president either. all of the lawlessness is, is wrong, no matter who's doing it. Yep. And, and it's so easy to embrace whatever it is we believe in in terms of political views and look at the and look at everybody else and say look at their lawlessness but the reality is all lawlessness is wrong and um and god is the only one that's really right mm -hmm. <laughs> so so i would listen to him and seek him and not not look at any news 
or social media or anything really, mm -hmm. um, unless it's bringing you joy and certainly yeah. the news won't be bringing you joy. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Somebody asked after you read Matthew, after you read John, Acts and Roman, where should you go from there? You could either keep going to the end of the new Testament and then start in Genesis and Exodus. Don't get discouraged if you read Leviticus and Numbers that's specifics on the temple. It's a lot of measurements. It's a lot of weights. And a lot of people get bogged down when they read Leviticus and Numbers. You should read it, though, so that you know what's happening. Just like right now, the Jews in Israel are getting ready to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. And you'll say, well, how in the world is that going to happen? There's a mosque on there right now. Well... We don't know, you know, God's going to perform a miracle. I've heard it actually a couple of, um, I've heard a couple of theories of things that are happening right now that are very interesting and it looks, they could just give it up and then the Jews could build the temple there. So they're already preparing for that. And so it's interesting to read in those to see what they're preparing now and how it goes along with the Bible. But here's the thing. Just start reading. Don't ask God when you read the Bible, before you sit down, ask God to reveal it to you and help you understand it. And he will. He does all the time and he will. Um, Mama, thank you. We got several Bible donations. Um, thank you, thank you. Uh, let's see, what do we got here? Do we have anything else that you can see? Um, I'm just looking through to see. I see a lot of comments, but nothing that specifically needs responding to, I don't think. Okay. Um, let's see real quick. Yeah. Okay. Kimberly's farm life says, hey, Buster. <laughs> yeah, poor Buster. He's, he'll, he'll, I don't know. Buster may go up with us. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, anyway, uh, let's see. Megan, I'm feeling a little better now. Trump is not the savior, and I've been a little miffed that Christians are rebuking me because I work in the news and don't like Trump. Well, no, Trump is not the savior, but I can tell you that if you are a Christian and you voted for Biden, you are extremely deceived. Anyone who says it's okay to kill unborn babies, but then calls themselves a Christian, is extremely deceived. And the Bible is very specific that in the end times, Christians are going to be deceived. And you can see that all the time. So no, our Savior is not a man by any means. I think that maybe we were given a reprieve for a while, well, but you know... But the truth is that... He's not our Savior. Well, and some people... I think forgot that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and a lot of people have forgotten that that God is our, the one. Yeah, it's, it's God funny is our savior. In the Bible, you know? there are times where, um, like, God tells the Israelites pick up the ark and carry it into battle, the Ark of the Covenant, which is the sort of the symbolic. Well, it's the I don't want to say symbolic. It's it represents the presence of God, and God said, "Pick up the ark and take it into battle, the Ark of the Covenant." And they would go into battle with it, and they would prevail. Well, one day they were praying and asking God for direction, and God did not respond. So they said, let's just go pick up the ark and run into battle with it. Well, it didn't work because they, he wants us to follow him. He doesn't want us to say, here's somebody I put in there that you like and you, and you recognize maybe I'm doing some good through this person, um, and then follow the person instead of me. I think that's... That's the thing. I think God wants us to follow him every single day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. All right, guys. We are going to do another two books draw away. Draw. Drawing. Draw All right. So let's do. Ah, let's just do two more dinings. Okay. So I got two more 20th anniversary dinings. One of these was used for the show. So it's got a little bit in it, but it's not too bad right here. If you want a book, please type book. We will do one on Facebook and one on YouTube. Um, 
One on Facebook and one on YouTube. All right, let's see. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, Julie says, I'm also limiting my social media time due to the hateful comments people are making. And I, I totally agree. But the other thing is, there are people that are making comments that I might agree with to some degree. But the way that they're making them is argumentative. Yeah. <laughs> with people, even if I don't agree with people that they're arguing with. Mm -hmm. I just think, you know, that's just bringing unnecessary strife into our lives. And mm -hmm. I ended up completely pulling away from social media recently as well mm -hmm. for that reason. So, yep. Okay, here we go. All right, you ready? Wait, for which one? YouTube? Yeah, okay. Scroll, scroll, Whoa, scroll. Oh, there's a lot of people. Stop I right there. Okay. You stop. Jody Dembeck. All right. Jody Denbeck on YouTube. Which book was it? Dining. Um, Dining 20th? Yeah. Livingonadime.com. Click on contact. And leave me your name and address and that you want a dining. Name, address, and the book you want. Before we go, guys, I'll do one more drawing here in just a second. All of our cookbooks, 30% off right now. All of our cookbooks, 30% off. We are having a prepping sale. Get your house prepped. You get your food and supplies that you need to be stuck in your house for a couple of weeks if necessary. Dining on Dime Cookbook helps you save money by cooking at home and teaches you how to do it quite easy. All right, now that was YouTube. Now Facebook, here we go. Oops. Facebook. Sorry, I was in the midst of a comment. I didn't realize you were. Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, I don't see anything new yet. Did nobody post on Facebook? Well, I'm oh, not yeah, sure they if Facebook, did. oh, my okay. comments aren't yep. seeing. Okay, Mike's not seeing it, so here we go. Facebook, okay. Karen Zedney. Karen, All right, Karen is a very, very faithful uh, viewer. Viewer. <laughs> I have your info, Karen, so I will just send it to you. All right, guys, livingonadime.com, 30% off right now, guys. Let me make sure there's no more questions that anybody has to ask. Real quick, just to make sure, out of Goshen, don't forget to give a thumbs up for our Living on a Dime family. We love you guys. We do. We I really used come visit. you as an example in a video the other day. A good example, right? <laughs> About getting your house appraised, but if you get a crazy house like our friends who bought the dome house. <laughs> but it's harder to appraise. <laughs> yeah, it can be. Did you guys ever get your roof? I keep meaning to, to email and ask you. Let me know. Did you get your roof? I'm curious. Um, I would love to come help you with the roof, but did I explain my need? <laughs> Mr. Yes. Old Man here. <laughs> oh, okay. thanks guys. We need to come visit them. We should jump in the car and go. <laughs> yes, we should. Uh, Megan, okay. Megan, I'm going to answer this question real quick because I, I know I get where you're coming from. Abortion shouldn't be the end of the litmus test if you're a Christian, if you're the releasing all restrictions on the corporations. And they go pollute the earth. We are not for fulfilling our missions to be st stewards. Yes. Wait, so one one sin does not make another sin better. No. So if you say it's okay to kill people made in the image of God, because some corporation out there that might might be doing something, but you aren't specifically witnessing it, even if you witness it and you see the corporation doing it. It does not mean that it's okay for us to destroy people made in the image of God. God specifically says that's the number one thing. And that's why we're not allowed to kill people. I mean, if, if abortion is okay, then why are school shootings bad? Um, because you are killing people made in the image of God. So that's not okay. But I, I'm not disagreeing with you if people are doing ridiculous things to if people are doing ridiculous things for to ruin the earth and causing all kinds of problems uh that those things are also bad <laughs> but it doesn't mean that 
it doesn't mean that it's okay to to violate really one of the most important to murder innocent children to take away to murder to murder people made in the image of God and take away their rights and take away the fact that they are they are somebody they're already somebody and I really hate to get into it too much but like here in Colorado <clears throat> they don't want to recognize that somebody is a person because they don't want to have to go into that ground but at the same time if somebody's baby dies for whatever reason that they don't have any control over, that person is deprived of the ability to legitimately mourn the baby because in our state, that person doesn't count. It's, to me, it's the same thing as if, if you choose some people are more important than other people, why, like for instance, black people are equally important to white people. And young people are equally important to old people and old people are equally important to young people. But if we say some of those people are more important than other people, that's defying God. Yeah. God, God made us all in his image. And, and so we, it's not our right to take someone else's life. Well, and the Bible is very specific that we are supposed <clears throat> to take care of the innocent children and just slaughtering them by murdering them before they're even born is not taking care of innocent children. So, um, plan with Jen, email me, go to livingonadime.com, click the contact. I have one gallon of goat's milk cream left. And if you want some, or if anybody else wants some, I'll see how many I can make up, but I have some one gallon. We're getting ready to move. If you want some, email me and I can, um, send you a PayPal invoice for that. Um, all right, let's see. No, out of Goshen still doesn't have a roof. Oh, I'm so no. sorry. Oh, that stinks, stinks, stinks. All right, killing is the 10th commandment. Yes, it is. And we have all broken the 10 commandments, which is why God sent Jesus to die for our sins. So, Anyway, and um, if you have sinned, there is no sin that you have committed that God will not take you. God will not. God will forgive you, and if yeah. you come now, so there is no sin that the only sin that can prevent you is rejecting, rejecting God. Yeah. Every mm -hmm. other sin, He will forgive. So if you're struggling because mm -hmm. you think, "Man, I've been so evil. I've done some terrible thing," no, you haven't. And that's why the Bible is full of examples. So if you have Virtually had an abortion, everyone, God will forgive you. Yeah. The Bible is full of examples. Everyone it lifts, lifts up as close to God's own heart and some a hero of the Bible in some way. The Bible just lays bare all mm -hmm. their evil, all their sin. But because they came to God and put their faith in Him, um, they were forgiven. And it, it doesn't mean that what they did is okay. And... I'm sure they would say, I wish I hadn't done that, but God redeemed them out of it. And mm -hmm. the Bible says God gives you beauty from ashes. So when there's some terrible thing, he can reconstruct you and make you new again, and he will. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say if you're, if you're worried that you're not good enough, come now. Yeah. Just say, hey, God, I don't, I, I really, I don't really know who you are and people are telling me and they and I I've read that your son Jesus came to pay the price for us and that you will adopt us into your family if we believe that he came to pay that price for us and if we accept that gift that he's giving us and I, I just would like to ask you to give that to me now and I want to follow you and I don't I'm not I don't know how I'm gonna do it God so if you could just do it for me and bring me to you in that way. I, I will let go of all of my preconceptions and everything. And I will let you do it. Because I remember with me, there was a point where I just thought, oh, I just felt the pressure like God was just saying, come, come to me now, come to me now. And I was like, oh, I've got this little, I've got a, I don't know if I really want to come right now. What about this thing I don't want to give up? What are you going to make me do? Am I going to have to change? And finally one day I just said, okay. I threw up my hands and I was thinking, I can't fix me. You're just going to have to do it. So I'll come. 
but you're gonna have to fix me <laughs> and I'll just follow you. And that's what he wanted from me all along. Yep. That's what he wants from all of us. Well, and people will say, you know, how can you have faith in Trump for the things that he did to women before? Well, okay, look we at... Our faith look is at, not in Trump. <laughs> for, well, first of all, look at David in the Bible. David had a man murdered so that he could take his wife. It doesn't get much worse than that. Yet, David repented and God forgave him. Now, I do not know where Trump stands. But I will tell you that there has been absolutely no evidence of any of that happening since he has been in the White House. And I understand he's been married three times. But God does forgive us of our sins. I don't know where he's at on that. But I will tell you that if you're murdering babies, it does not... How do I say this? I'm not... I'm tired. The fact that you're voting for someone who is murdering babies is a thousand times worse than anything Trump has ever done for as far as that goes. But sin is sin. Also and I will sin. tell you, Trump has never, that I have seen, had any open sin like Clinton, Biden, that kind of thing has had in office. He is not perfect. I am not saying well, he, he hasn't sinned. He is all, not our savior. And all of the people whose names she just mentioned and everyone who's listening and us, all of them sin every single day. And even if you're a Christian and even if you're saved, you sin every single day. That's a curse that we're all under. But the curse is going to be over soon when Jesus comes back. Mm -hmm. so, so we should rejoice in that. Yeah. And so when you say, oh, well, someone did this or someone did that. David in the Bible murdered, <laughs> murdered to get his wife. His son was, God took his son from him because he was not obedient to God. He repented and was forgiven. That is the key, is that you repent and ask to be forgiven of your sins and change your ways. Repenting is when you change your ways after you have asked for forgiveness. It doesn't mean you're not going to mess up, but it means that you are truly trying to change your ways. If your husband is abusing you and you kick him out and say, I'm not having you back, and he comes back, oh, please forgive me, please forgive me, please forgive me. You can forgive him, but you do not accept him back until he has repented and changed his ways, which would look like being in counseling for his anger issues, being in marriage counseling with you, supporting you and the kids while you're separated, going to church with you and the kids if you're if you're doing if you're a Christian, or if you can now, but that is how you repent is when you actually change your ways. It doesn't mean you're not going to screw up along the ways, but you need to see forward progress and just saying, "Oh, forgive me" is not truly repenting. Okay. Um, wow. That went Thanks a whole different us. direction than I thought. Thank you, Texas Made Food, for that super chat. We really appreciate that. Um, and again, since we're at this point, uh, if you do not have a Bible and you can't afford one, we have, we give them away free. Yeah. And we ship them anywhere. Yeah. So if you uh, if you would like one and you don't have one, go to livingonadime.com, click on store, and then click on free Bible, and the in information about how to get it for free are there. Is there? Um, Anna, I thought blaspheming the Holy Spirit was the unpardonable sin, not abortion, as well as one will know a true Christian by their fruit. Okay. I didn't say. Did I say abortion was the unpardonable no. sin? Okay. No. no. You said it was. You I, said the only pardonable, the only unpardonable sin is rejecting God. Yeah. That's what I. Yeah. God forgives. So, all of your sins if you come to him and are changed. Yeah. If you if you reject him and the Bible says if you reject God and you don't accept him, then um, then you your sins are on you and you will eventually have to pay for them forever. Mm -hmm. Jesus paid the sentence for our sin. 
So all we have to do is just ask him to forgive us and, and he will help us change our ways if we give our life to him. But Matilda, definitely you are correct, Anna. It is, that is yeah. not an unpardonable no, it's sin. Not. It's not. No. But and if that's a... happened to you, just ask for forgiveness. Your baby is in heaven with Jesus. And if you aren't a Christian and you become one, you will be with your baby in heaven. But there is a heaven and there is a hell. And if you have not given your life to Christ, you won't be with your baby in heaven when you die. And here, you know, it's very interesting. One of my viewers this week sent me this. And they quoted Amir uh, Safante, which, ooh, oh, is on in an hour. At Jack Hibbs. Amir and Jack are on in an hour. We'll have to watch it. Um, but, um, uh, what was I? Oh, shoot. I totally lost my train. Oh, Amir said, you know, if people were afraid of hell, were as afraid of hell as they are of this virus, the world would be a completely different place. And that is very true. You need to be more afraid of going to hell than you do of a virus. That's because... why as Christians, we are not afraid of this virus. God knows the day that we are going to die. He's already told us. I could croak in my sleep tonight. Or on the show. Or on the show. <laughs> well, and if, and if you haven't, so, if you aren't already aware of this, sin is is an, it is a terminal illness that's going to kill us all. Yeah. Sin is yeah. a terminal illness that's going to kill us all. Mm -hmm. Yes. But the Bible says that you can die once physically, or you can die twice, which is physically and eternally. Yep. And yeah. if you, if nobody had ever sinned, we wouldn't die at all. But um, Adam and Eve did. But if you if you are saved, if if you if you trust Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you accept the gift that God gave us, then you can't really die. You can physically die, but you won't be dying. Well, you won't really die when you go to hell. You're going to live an eternal right. suffering for eternity. But what I, Yeah, that's true. But what I mean is you won't have that experience, and the regular death is not, not so significant yep. after yeah. that. Yep. Uh, so. Bandana Grandma, she's probably referring to saying, if you vote for someone who promotes abortion and call yourself a Christian, you are deceived. That is exactly what I'm saying. And it's not that I'm saying you're not unforgivable. Do you have any taste buds left <laughs> after searing them off? Actually, I didn't really burn it that bad. Um, <laughs> yes, Linda, I'm doing it now. <laughs> who is Amir and where to find him? Amir Safante is Behold Israel. And he is a Jewish Christian who lives in Israel. And he, see th he sees things happening in his country that are not reported on the news here and it is what? absolutely amazing absolutely amazing one of these days damascus is going to be blown to bits and every person is going to be dead in damascus and you see every day signs of the fighting that's happening over there and he reports those kinds of things and so he talks about how the bible talks about things happening and how it relates to what's happening in our world today. Go to Jack Hibbs on YouTube. He is the pastor that we watch for our church on Sunday since we don't have a church right now. Uh, we love Jack Hibbs. We love Amir Safante. Michael put a link to our Christian resources. We love Ch Charles Stanley. We love Chuck Swindoll. Wait, wait, what am I putting in? The Christian resources. All right. Um, and so these are the guys that we listen to. They are Christians that seem to be very grounded. And pray for them, guys. Jack Hibbs was in Washington, D.C. last week. You need to be praying for these guys, that God will give them strength, give them energy, and give them rest and help keep them from temptation. All of those things. We need to be praying for these guys right now because really Satan is doing everything he can to try and bring us down. And even me, I'll be perfectly honest, even me this week, I have been like, I cannot get myself to do anything. Josie wants to know Jack Hibbs. Jack Hibbs. H-I-B-B-S on YouTube. Jack Hibbs. H-I-B-B-S. 
And even me this week, I'm like, I am so tired of trying to figure out what people want to watch for videos. I'm tired of trying to do clickbait titles so people will actually click on the titles. I am tired of even trying. We have enough money to live two or three, probably three or four years saved up that we could just retire today and live three or four years and we would be fine. So why don't we just do that? Well, because as Christians, we are called. We're on a mission. To fight. And Jesus is our armor. And if we put on that armor, he will give us the strength to fight. So even though I felt like I couldn't get my butt off the chair this week and do anything, I now know he was resting me up for today's show. So. <laughs> Cool. We are still going. <laughs> so anyway, all right, guys. Um, yes, Jack Hibbs, H-I-B-B-S. We love Pastor Jack, and he is great. Um, Bible studies. Yes, when are you going to start your Bible study, dear? <laughs> Soon. <laughs> no, give a date. He loves it when I do that to him. <laughs> Are you going to give a date? Uh, soon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We will see you later. Please visit us at livingonadime.com. 30% off all our books right now. Our print books right now. But your questions are inspiring, and definitely I was just talking to Tara about that the other day. So, <gasps> Karen paid off all her credit cards this week. Yay. You go, girl. That uh, is great. And well, and Matilda says, Tara, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks to your videos about being a stay-at-home mom. I have just opened a small kindergarten, allowing me to stay home with my son. Thank you for so much for the, inspir the yep. inspiration. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I kind of got on a tangent on one of my videos about working moms this week, and... I'm sorry, I know I ticked a lot of people off, but you need to be there for your kids, and that is wonderful. So, oh, thank you, BJ. I've just found you too. You must keep this up. You're such an encouragement. I well, really thank appreciate you. that. Oh, we love you too, out of Goshen. And yes. we love you, Bandana Grandma and Kath. I need one of those little. Oh, wait, where is it? Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Okay, see if anybody recognizes this. Hold on, we're almost done. I see Eric, and I see Ashley, what? I see Susie, what is this? and I see Kathy. Does anybody know what that is? <laughs> no idea. Is that from some weird I got show? nothing. <laughs> Does anybody, okay, if I will pick one person who knows what that is, and I will give you this very slightly damaged corner cookbook, if anybody can tell me what that is. So, let's see, can they tell me? And then we'll go. Oh, ah! Terry got it. Oh, and so did, so did Denise. Okay. <laughs> romper room. Romper room. What is oh romper room? <laughs> okay, Kathy hold on. I'm gonna pick between Thomas. you two. Hold on. Right. Okay, right, right here, Denise. Denise. I will send you this one, Denise. <laughs> wow, lots of people got it. I'm sorry. I have to say. Yeah, dude. I Going by. <laughs> <laughs> See? I feel out of the out of the loop. <laughs> you feel out of the loop. Denise, email me. Go to livingonadime.com, click on the contact, send me your name and address, and that you did a new new dining. A new dining. Okay. Alright guys. We will see you guys next time. <laughs> Please visit us at Living on a Dime. Dot com and remember that God loves you. Yes. And God is in control. And all who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. And a women. Oh, I couldn't resist. I'm only kidding. I'm only <laughs> kidding. How stupid can these people be? Sorry. <laughs> hey, wait for me. Okay. Alright, bye everyone.